ko atua tamuaru e tapu me ngāne he rupu te māngai ai. Ko te awhina ka mansita morau taka wingoa, ko te koe te pōtiki a Dick and Turi morau, o te kapu ki te waru. Um, kia ora te whānau, if you win my name. Uh, my name is Te Awhina Carmen Sita Morel, but short for Carmen Morel, I suppose. Um, my mum and dad were uh, born and bred Fraserdale, uh, affiliated to uh, all the hapu of Ngā Tokori Ahini Manuhiri, and I live in Fraserdale. Kia ora tātou. I'm Johnina Symes. I represent Ngāti Rākai Pākā. Um, Pauline, my sister-in-law, and I are the two representatives for Ngāti Rākai Pākā. At the moment, Pauline's looking after the whānau at home in Nuhaka, and I got sent here to fight for what is ours. Kia ora. Kia ora, and thank you um, to the trustees. And special mention to uh, Tehini Khan here. She's uh, filling in for Te Wairo Tapukarau. As she mentioned, she's part of the Kaumatu Kahui Committee. And I'll also just uh, acknowledge Aunty Mihi Cloud, who's just turned up. She's also part of the uh, Kaumata Kahui. It's one of the committees that we've uh, instituted um, to help the trustees in their business as they move through um, this particular process, but other processes as well that will involve the guidance of the Kaumata Kahui. Um, they, they tend not to see themselves as Kaumata, they see themselves as Pakeke. Um, it's kind of a, um, they are quite integral in, in terms of the, the trustees uh, assisting them with um, moving forward. So I'd just like to acknowledge those two um, Kaumata we have in, a presence in the room today. Uh, moving forward into the presentation in terms of the, oh, do you want to introduce yourself, Kapai? Yeah, take it to the mic, Auntie. あ、けろたたあ、こなちとれしてね。ほいやの。こたいまいこいだってめんのい。あ。のてはぷおひねまのひりやはうのとたまたらにてまらい。かはうあ、てたような あ、まんがたいたいね、ウェネラヘヘメエフ、フペトヌアティネマイ。ホヤノ、あ、イチュプアハウキタワイロ。え、クライナハウキタワイロ。え、モヤチュタクタネキアフリリ。あの、コチマ
uh, where potentially uh, the, uh, the asset arrangements and governance representation could sit. Um, now what we've done is taking your feedback on that and come up with two particular models um, that are in the booklet, uh, one around uh, consolidated ownership and one around diversified ownership in terms of assets. And also you've seen our kind of feedback in terms of uh, the governance re representation issue. Um, uh, currently, as, as you're aware, we are represented by uh, seven kahui um, that make up Tato Tato to Wairo. Um, we, we looked at the re representation around uh, Marae, Hapu, and that came through quite strongly. Um, we looked at having them represented directly on the trust. I uh, looked at the numbers and, and thought that, well, they're quite large, some of those uh, groups. Marae, you know, 40 odd Marae. Hapu, there's close to 200 odd Hapu. Having a governance structure like that is quite, quite large and cumbersome. Um, our members are quite familiar with the, the kahui structure so, and thought that uh, that kahui structure is, um, just needs a bit of refining. Uh, we get a lot of questions on about page 16 in the booklet, uh, in the presentation. That is just a representation of where we're at currently, that we inherited that from Tatita Whakemi uh, when it went through its process with the Crown. So that page 16 is a reference to um, the Crown process of where we landed. That's, that's to say that we can ref we will refine that and change that uh, with, with feedback from our um, members in terms of which particular um, representation groupings as they should be structured going forward into the future. So that's kind of the issue on representation. Um, with the asset stuff, as I said, there's the two, two particular models. There's also a, a kind of another process there. You'll see an independence, Warpu independence process. It also came through quite, quite strong in the feedback, uh, particular Ropu, um, and Naitaraka Tō wanted to exercise a, a kind of a, a process to go through to, to, to withdraw or, or be independent of Tato Tato. So we've kind of built that process into, into the feedback today as well and need your feedback on, on, on an independence process, uh, whether you're happy with that. And there's kind of a, a rough framework there that we'll need to consider. And then from that framework, we'll need to refine and then hopefully uh, include in the recommendations and, and in the ratified uh, trust deed that we need to make to change this. So. so that's basically just a bit of a, a rough outline of the, of the presentation. Um, I'll go through after the presentation and add a bit more clarity around some of the other issues that you may see in the presentation as well as in the booklet, and then we'll break into some questions and answers. So without any further ado, I'll get our technology person to start our presentation. And it's about 20 minutes long, so go for it. Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai, haere mai. Thank you for joining us today in our second round of engagement hui to plan for our prosperous future. We are Tato Tato o Te Wairoa Trust, the Post Settlement Governance Entity or PSGE for the Iwi and Hapu o Te Rohe o Te Wairoa. It is our responsibility on behalf of our Iwi and Hapu to manage the redress that will be received as part of our settlement with the Crown. In August this year, we held our first round of engagement hui across nine locations in Aotearoa. Our trustees sought your feedback on our values, aspirations and principles, and on proposed concepts for how our representation and asset ownership structure could look in the future. It was great to see so many whānau participating, and new faces too, with many tuning in to watch the live-streamed videos and sending us their thoughts online. We received invaluable feedback from you during this time, which has shaped our trustees' mahi over the last two months. Now we're coming back to you to cord it all some more. 
Today's hui is an opportunity to hear more about the feedback you have provided so far and to talk through our refined values, aspirations and principles and models for representation and asset ownership. We want to know if we have heard you correctly and if you agree with the proposals we present. What you tell us during this hui is critical to help shape the thinking on our future representative structure and about asset ownership arrangements. The presentation covers the key points in your information booklet. Following this presentation, we will have 30 minutes for you to ask any questions you may have. Katahi ka kaputi tato, so you can meet and talk to your representatives and our support teams who are here today. Also, if you are not yet a registered member of Tato Tato o Te Wairua, we can help you register today. We are back on a hikoi across Aotearoa, holding our second round of hui in Wairua, Ahuriri, Te Whanganui Atara, Rotorua, Kirikiriroa, Tamaki Makaurau, Te Papa Ioia, Wai Hōpai, Me o Tautahi. We are presenting exactly the same information at each hui, which will cover a recap of our August hui and what we asked of you, a look at the feedback we received from Fano, our aspirations, values and principles, considering the refined approach, our recommended approach for representation, two models as options for our asset management. Your feedback is important. We want to know we have heard you correctly and if we're on the right track. What you tell us today will directly impact on the models our trustees recommend to you for voting on next year. Remember, it's you, our people, who ultimately decide on the future of Tato Tato. We will now focus on the areas where we want your feedback, thoughts and questions. Firstly, your aspirations, values and principles. In 2012, a series of workshops were held to identify our aspirations as we work towards the settlement. At our August engagement hui, we asked you to tell us whether these aspirations were still relevant to you today. These are important as they will help to guide Tato Tato o Te Wairua as we move forward. When providing feedback, we ask you to consider do the aspirations, values and principles still fit for our Fano, hapu and iwi? How would you like us to operate? Do these best reflect your aspirations, values and principles? What might be missing? We will now look at the aspirations, values and principles which have been updated and refined to reflect what you have told us. Our updated and refined vision is Tato Tato o te wairua, he iwi motuhake, he tangata o rangake. Our updated and refined aspirations centre around the well being of our iwi, hapu, and Fano. They are social well being, restoration of health and social conditions for our iwi and hapu, cultural well being, Restoration and protection of the cultural identity of our iwi and hapu. Environmental well-being. Revitalization of the local environment and restoration of our role as kaitiaki of our natural resources. Economic well-being. Rebuilding an economic base for our iwi and hapu and reassertion of our tinoranga tiratanga. Our refined values and principles focus on the areas that you told us are most meaningful to you. They are wairuatanga, fostering our unique features of mana whenua and tangata whenua. Rangatiratanga, your right to be the architect of your own future and development. Manakitanga, respecting, nurturing and caring for others. Kaitiakitanga, Guardians of Ngā Taonga Tukuiho, Te Taiao. Whanaungatanga. Our kinship is determined through blood and whāngai. Whakapapa. These refined aspirations, values and principles aim to reflect the feedback you have given us. So, have we heard you correctly? 
Do these aspirations, values and principles reflect the way you believe Tato Tato should be guided in our mahi? E anga whakamua na te waka, forging a new path. We will now look at the refined models for our future representation and two models as options for our asset management structure. What we asked of you. At our previous engagement hui, we presented you with three asset and representation concepts. There were devolution, whakatohatoha, collaboration, mahitahi, amalgamation, kotahitanga. Each of these concepts could be applied separately to assets and representation arrangements, or parts taken from each to create a new model. They reflect possibilities at each end of the scale, and a middle option. In August, you told us what you thought of these concepts and why. What aspects you like and what parts you don't like. We have listened to your views and brought them together to develop a recommended representation approach and two new models for the future structure of Tato Tato for you to consider. A representation approach could be seven ropu, like the existing kahui groups, but based on rohe and tipuna. The new models for you to consider are Model 1, whakatopu, consolidated ownership, shared management of assets for the benefit for all. Model 2, kanoro, diversified ownership. Ropu owns some assets and Tato Tato owns some assets. We will now talk more about each of these options. From your feedback, many Fano want to continue on the path that we have forged through the settlement process so far, being grouped by kahui or clusters of hapu for representation, then coming together under one umbrella group. After considering your feedback, the initial trustees recommend the following representation approach for Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. Seven Ropu, like the existing kahui groups, but based on rohe and tipuna. This means that each Ropu will include hapu that whakapapa to that tipuna and marae that are based within that rohe. Each ropu would elect its own two representatives, including at least one ahika as trustees for Tato Tato. You would choose one ropu for the purposes of voting to elect your trustees. You can also list other ropu as part of your registration with Tato Tato if you have a whakapapa connection to one or more hapu within those other ropu. We also need to decide if there should be the option for a ropu to leave Tato Tato or Te Wairua if it decided that it wanted to be independent. If our people want this to be able to happen, the Tato Tato trust deed would need to be amended. This would be done as part of the vote early next year on the structure of Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust. We have outlined a process in your information booklet on how this would work. The key principles are that high voting thresholds ensure fairness and a robust process. All adult registered members of Tato Tato would need to vote to approve the framework, as this ensures transparency for all. Adopu could not trigger an exit at any time. They would have to do it within a certain period so Tato Tato has certainty going forward. If a ropu becomes independent, they would no longer be a part of Tato Tato, not have any trustee representatives on Tato Tato, and remain connected to Tato Tato through a formal agreement for cultural redress and rights to purchase RFR land. This is your choice, Fano. If you think it is important for Ropu to have this option, we can include it in the special resolutions that you will vote on early next year. Now we will look a bit closer at the models for our asset ownership arrangements. All this information is contained in the information booklet from page 18 onwards.
The first model is whakatōpū, consolidated ownership. In this scenario, Tato Tato owns and manages all assets for the benefit of all the iwi and hapu o te rohe o te wairua. Everyone shares in the whole of the assets, so no asset is given to a specific rōpū, and all ups and downs in performance of assets are shared. The second model is kanorau, diversified ownership. Here, each rōpū would own some of their own assets and be responsible for those. Tato Tato o te Wairua Trust also owns some assets. Rōpū and Tato Tato can engage in a management policy to share administration of commercial assets. Let's now look at the key features of the two models. Remember, these models are based on your feedback and are not final. Your feedback today will help shape these further. We'll start with whakatōpū, consolidated ownership. Key features of this model are Tato Tato owns all the deferred selection properties, the Patunamu and Farerata forest interests, and any right of refusal land purchased in the future. Tato Tato manages these assets for the benefit of all. All ups and downs in performance of assets are shared, as are all risks, costs and administration. Everyone shares in the whole of the assets. Tato Tato distributes profits to Rōpū annually, reinvests income for future generations and funds operations. Grouping assets will create economies of scale, guided by collective decision-making. In comparison, kanorau, diversified ownership, means that ownership of assets is shared. On settlement, rōpū could be allocated a percentage of all cash and assets, with the remaining cash and assets pooled in tato tato. Rōpū and tato tato can engage in a management policy to share administration of commercial assets. Under this model, profits and losses are incurred by the rōpū from the assets that they own. For commercial properties, a rōpū will need to instruct Tato Tato to exercise a right to purchase a deferred selection property or future RFR site. Dispute resolution processes will be put in place if rōpū cannot agree on ownership of certain assets. Cultural reduce relationships remain with Tato Tato. So, those are the two refined models. To see these in more detail, go to pages 18 to 21 of your information booklet. It's important to understand that what you have seen today is not final. We are simply seeking your feedback to determine if we have heard you correctly in August and if we've got it right. Today we want your feedback on our aspirations, values and principles, our representation approach, our two asset management models. Let's now recap. We are holding the second series of engagement hui to check we've heard you correctly and seek your feedback on the refined models. In February next year, we plan on holding a ratification process on the special resolutions required by our trust deed, where we will ask you to vote on our potential asset and representation arrangements. What we recommend to you then will be heavily influenced by what you tell us today. We anticipate that in early to mid-2018, our settlement legislation is likely to pass its final reading and become law. That will bring an end to over 30 years of mahi on this important kaupapa. However, it is just the beginning of our new era. By the end of August 2018, we will need to complete the amendments to the trust deed by special resolution and in October there will be new trustee elections. It's an incredibly busy but exciting time for our whānau and we are grateful you are here on this journey with us. You can provide feedback on the feedback form at the back of your information booklet or through our online feedback form on the Tato Tato website or on our Facebook page. 
Remember, it is you, our people, who decide on the final asset and representation arrangements. In 2018, all adult registered members will have the opportunity to vote on the special resolutions. So please check with Fano to ensure they're registered. If not, tell them to head to our website now. We'll now have questions and answers. Before we do, we have the following ground rules. Please respect others and remain quiet so that their questions can be heard clearly. Please identify yourself when you speak so we can record your name. Please keep questions related to the aspirations, values and principles, the recommended representation approach, or the two asset ownership models outlined today. For other matters, please talk to one of your representatives. Noreira from all of us here at Tato Tata o Te Wairua Trust, ngā mihi nui kia koutou katoa. Mauri ora. Now we will look a bit closer at the models for our asset ownership arrangements. All this information is contained in the information booklet from page 18 onwards. The first model is Whakatōhu, Consolidated Ownership. In this scenario, Tātou Tātou owns and manages all assets for the benefit of all the iwi and hapū o te rohe o te wairua. Everyone shares in the whole of the assets, so no asset is given to a specific rōpū, and all ups and downs in performance for the assets are shared. <coughs> the second model is Pamodau, diversified ownership. Here, each rōpū would own some of their own assets and be responsible for those. Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust also owns some assets. Rōpū and Tato Tato can engage in a management policy to share administration of commercial assets. Let's now look at the key features of the two models. Remember, these models are based on your feedback and are not final. Your feedback today will help shape these further. We'll start with Whakatōhu, Consolidated Ownership. Key features of this model are Tato Tato owns all the deferred selection properties, the Patunamu and Whareata forest interests, and any right of refusal land purchased in the future. Tato Tato manages these assets for the benefit of all. All ups and downs in performance of assets are shared, as are all risks, costs, and administration. Everyone shares in the whole of the assets. Tato Tato distributes profits to Rōpū annually, reinvests income for future generations, and funds operations. Grouping assets will create economies of scale, guided by collective decision-making. In comparison, Kamoro, diversified ownership, means that ownership of assets is shared. On settlement, Rōpū could be allocated a percentage of all cash and assets, with the remaining cash and assets pooled in Tato Tato. Rōpū and Tato Tato can engage in a management policy to share administration of commercial assets. Under this model, profits and losses are incurred by the Rōpū from the assets that they own. For commercial properties, a Rōpū will need
need to instruct Tato Tato to exercise a right to purchase a deferred selection property or future RFR site. Dispute resolution processes will be put in place if Bilton cannot agree on ownership of certain assets. Cultural reduce relationships <coughs> remain with Tato Tato. So, those are the two refined models. To see these in more detail, go to pages 18 to 21 of your information booklet. It's important to understand that what you have seen today is not final. We are simply seeking your feedback to determine if we have heard you correctly in August and if we've got it right. Today we want your feedback on our aspirations, values and principles, our representation approach, our two asset management models. Let's now recap. We are holding the second series of engagement group to check we've heard you correctly and seek your feedback on the refined models. In February next year, we plan on holding a ratification process on the special resolutions required by our trust deed, where we will ask you to vote on our potential asset and representation arrangements. What we recommend to you then will be heavily influenced by what you tell us today. We anticipate that in early to mid-2018, our settlement legislation is likely to pass its final reading and become law. That will bring an end to over 30 years of May on this important kaupapa. However, it is just the beginning of our new era. By the end of August 2018, we will need to complete the amendments to the trustee by special resolution and in October, there will be new trustee elections. It's an incredibly busy but exciting time for our whānau, and we are grateful you are here on this journey with us. You can provide feedback on the feedback form at the back of your information booklet, or through our online feedback form on the Tato Tato website, or on our Facebook page. Remember, it is you, our people, who decide on the final asset and representation arrangements. In 2018, all adult <laughs> registered members will have the opportunity to vote on the special resolutions. So please check with Fano to ensure they're registered. If not, tell them to head to our website now. We'll now have questions and answers. Before we do, we have the following ground rules. Please respect others and remain quiet so that their questions can be heard clearly. Please identify yourself when you speak so we can record your name. Please keep questions related to the aspirations, values and principles, the recommended representation approach, or the two asset ownership models outlined today. For other matters, please talk to one of your representatives. Noreda from all of us here at Tato Tato of the Waiwa Trust, now mihi nui kia koutou katoa. Well, kia ora whanau and thank you for uh, listening and watching our presentation. Uh, it is a confirmation of a lot of work that the trustees have been undertaking, but also um, hopefully it is reflective of your feedback that you've given us so far today. Um, and coming up with this is um, quite unique in that a lot of UE or PSG entities have this decision already made for their members. They don't, get, they don't usually give the opportunity for their members um, to shape the future. So there is a lot of responsibility in these, uh, in, with this information and providing us with uh, some clear direction and with the pending ratification vote on the, on the recommendations that we come up, come up with. So, so, it's, so we're, we're putting this back into our members' hands to hopefully give us some, some guidance as well as make the final decision. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's uh, our settlement, it's all of our settlement. Uh, we need to uh, have a clear direction and clear understanding how we want the structure in the future going forward. Um, so those are the, the key, I guess, the confirmation of the, uh, of the feedback and what we've come up with um, by, by looking at your feedback, doing the analysis, looking through it. Um, ho hopefully, in the first instances, with the values, aspirations, and principles, which is pretty easy, which is the non kind of controversial stuff. Um, we've kind of grouped them all into uh, uh, under five those five different key headings there. Uh, uh, 
within those sits uh, the other values and principles that we've, um, members have given us uh, over the, the first round of engagement in August. Um, we've decided to group them like that because then it, it gives us the opportunity to measure ourselves against them if we're, we're abiding by them, if we're, if we're achieving them. Um, but also, it's, you can see how it relates to um, the values and principles need to relate to the models um, in, in terms of make sure that there's that uh, clear, uh, clear alignment and clear and transparency with them. Um, moving on to the um, representation arrangements, um, clearly uh, uh, the trustees have thought that uh, we would like the Kauhi model, but we just need to structure it a little bit more differently um, in terms of rohe based, tupuna based areas. Um, the Crown, when we had the, through the Tatira process, uh, was based on hapu, um, exclusively only based on hapu for, 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 the, for the settlement purposes. Now, without the crown and without the crown policy in, in, the, in this process, we are able to decide on what that representation arrangement looks like for us. Um, and, and we're kind of wanting that process to come from the ground up rather than from ta 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 dictating to areas and groups and say that this is what you look like. Um, it's best that these conversations occur at the ground level, at the kawi, hapu, marae level. Um, I understand it is currently happening within. Uh, back home, which is good. We want to foster that and continue that those groups have a discussion with themselves and make sure that they come up with a model that they agree on. So different individual rupu you would have seen there can arrange themselves differently. Um, some could be marae based, some could be hapu based, some could be at large. So it gives you gives those rupu the flexibility to structure themselves in such a way that bet suits them rather than having a blanket approach to all the rupu. Uh, so there's a bit of flexibility there we thought that we need to build into the, into the representation model. Um, it came to structured with Tatita, and we've got a lot of pushback through, why isn't my hapu up there? Why isn't these hapu there? Why is there hapu in that particular kahui? So we're wanting that decision now to go back to those particular kahui to come up with what that looks like for them and make them, let them make the decision. Um, so, so that's um, trying to hopefully work through that process. It's, it's been quite a lot of fracture at home. Uh, we understand um, they want to make some changes now. Why is my hapu in the settlement? Um, we'll be trying to make changes with OTS in terms of ensuring that uh, those hapu are included, but it's a crown process on that aspect. In terms of the settlement and the bill, we can't change what's in there because that's what the crown wants, and that's the crown policy, but we can change what's in the trustee. And moving forward, we'll make those changes as um, our members see fit and as the kahus want to structure themselves. Um, with, with um, moving on through um, representation, you would have seen also the uh, independence process. Uh, it is a um, quite an interesting process to run through um, with our members, and, and whether that that framework gets exists on the within the booklet is something our members are, ha are happy to, to run through. Um, it is only it's a time-bound process. Uh, it must be um, made aware that uh, we need to give certainty to Tata Tata going forward um, that it knows. Basically, who's 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 on this journey with them with Tato Tato? Who wants to, to run and in, in, go independent? Um, we, we need to give them all the ability to to move forward and progress forward as much as possible. Having a, a process where the Rupu could have that option available over to a longer period of time just creates a bit more uncertainty for Tato Tato. Uh, we want to make sure that um, they're given all the, the resources they need to, to to progress their work because they'll need to do some. Um, long-term vision, long-term investment strategy, you know, 20, 30 years out, you know, they need to be, uh, have the flexibility and ability to do that and not be hamstrung by thinking that a particular rule people want to exit every five, six, five, ten years. So having something that in place like that is, is a, bit, a bit risky for, for Tata Tata. But we understand that the, the independence process is put there because um, we, we do recognise we came together in 2009 at to, 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 to go down this journey in the claims process. It is natural that we have that option to say to the Lopu, say to the classes, do you want to continue together or do you want to go separate? So that's why it's there. So. Um, other than independence, moving through to the two models, you would have seen um, they're quite um, uh, a next step down from what we came back to within August. Um, they're a bit more detailed, what our members wanted to see, or how would that look in terms of detail and structure. Um, one is quite consolidating the asset, um, and one is where a certain portion, <coughs> certain portion of the asset is diversified out, as well as a, a, a percentage is kept in. So it's, 
So it's that they are quite um, different in terms of respect, um, in terms of their perspective and their purpose. Um, one, one looks at more long-term, the consolidated, <coughs> consolidated model, with the benefits out in terms of the future, whereas the um, diversified model, it looks to give a, give a kind of a, a drop of in, um, capital now to the individual, <coughs> individual rope, sorry, <coughs> to get on and do what they want to do with uh, down to their priorities. At the same time, also having a, a pool of assets there collectively help. Um, in terms of the, uh, in terms of those two two models, um, they are uh, we may the trustees' aim is trying to get them converged into one potentially, and there's one recommendation the trustees will make in terms of a, a particular model. Um, but we are mindful, we are mindful of that. One full of that, that we may not get to one model. Uh, we may be stuck with the, these two models, in which case the recommendation could potentially be that the members put these two models out um, to the members to vote on. Uh, we'll work hard to get it down to one model, so there's only one model, um, but at the same time, you can see the diversity of the two models. They may not um, come together into one particular structure. So, um, But the trustees will try their best to, to try and narrow the recommendation down as much as possible to ensure that... Uh, um, there's one, uh, one model, um, it's clear cut, and we'll come back around next year and explain all this uh, when, we, when we reach that final recommendation. So yeah, so that's kind of the, the, in a nutshell where we've landed. Um, it's been a, it's a difficult task. Uh, trustees have some, uh, had some difficult conversations with themselves and with each other, uh, as well as um, um, so there's still some more difficult conversations to be had going forward into the future. But we need to make sure that we continue these discussions and at the same time make sure our members are involved in, in, in this process because um, it's quite key. And one other key aspect you may want, you'll see in the book and one of the questions we need to ask you is, is regarding the settlement itself. Um, with, it is an assumption that the settlement is, uh, equal, equal with, is equally shared with the seven clusters. And the question we ask ourselves is, you know, is equal fair in terms of the settlement? Um, we kind of realise that there's other ways of looking at it, um, population-based, particular rōpū, um, area of a particular rōpū, treaty breaches of a particular rōpū. And when you take all those factors into account, they may not be equal. Um, certain rōpū may have a larger share of the settlement. So this is something that we need from our members to, to understand that uh, it's a quite an important conversation to ask ourselves, how do we view the settlement as a collective? Is it individually seen as um, certain rope we have a greater proportion over it, or is it easier to see it as one collective as all? So when we go to, um, you know, particularly when you go to asset distribution, that formula becomes quite, re quite relevant then. If a particular rope has a greater proportion of that, of the settlement, it will get a larger proportion of the capital distribution. But at the same time, it also applies both to both models in terms of um, income distribution. If a particular rupu has a larger share of the settlement, it would then get a larger distribution yeah. if you were down that process. Yep, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, so I understand that's a key point in the, in the booklet. So it's one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves you know, about that particular aspect. But other than that, so those are the the key points of the of the presentation, um, and if there's any questions regarding the as, uh, aspirations, values, and principles, is kind of where is the easy bit to start off with, and then we kind of move through that question section at the back of the booklet um, around some of the representation and the two models. So, any anyone got any particular questions around aspirations, values, and principles? It's hopefully it's incorporated all your. Give me time to run the microphone. More the easy one to. I'll put them up. Oh, we're live streaming, so you'll need this. Um, <clears throat> so, Kotaku Pato, Ipanaki, Nemia, Nga Uara, and the values and principles. 
Uh, no doubt these will be weaved and woven within the uh, the two structures, the two proposed models that you're bringing in today. Mm. Yeah, the plan is to make sure that they are consistent and they represent those values and principles incorporated into the two models. It also guides us in, through the discussions we have with each other to make sure if we are um, working towards those principles and not other principles that sometimes guide us. So it gives us clear direction. That's why we had quite a started with a values and principles approach to this discussion rather than focusing on the money and the assets because that tends to drive everyone in a different direction. If you kind of stick with those values and principles to begin with, then that lays the foundation for hopefully then the end result will be a lot more easy to get to. Page 12. In Wellington, we've got, uh, we had um, feedback around how water. Where's how water fit within? It should be out on its own or should it be part of the, the social aspect that we've got up there? Is that a, is that a, is that a discussion to, to separate it out? Uh, I know that those um, well beings came from back into Tita's days where this, the four well beings we had started with. And do we need to separate some of them out a little bit more? And how the water was one. Well, do you see them already being represented? Well, we did get a comment back that maybe it should be a separate aspiration on its own. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it was aimed particularly at mental health? Yeah. Um, I think uh, mental health is an issue that um, I'd like to see uh, some some initiatives be done in regards to that, mm. and especially for our rangatahi. Te rā mea te mate whakamomori, mm. um, e whakanini haere ki wainganui a, a, a tō tātou rangatahi, mm. se kare pai tērā i ngā mm. wāo mua e tū tika e tū, e tū kaha na ngā tāne ngā rangatahi, mm. engari i e nei rā, Kwa kwa rere ki a rātou, uh, a rātou whakāro, a uh, hine ngaro. So mm. I think um, it'd be great to have uh, an mm. initiative in there in regards to mental health. Kia ora. Mm. Mm. And also the rangatahi voice that came through clear at Wellington as well. Where's their um, voice within the whole tato tato? Um, should we set up a separate committee for that? To reset what kind of what kind of structure do that they they, they recognise best and they can affiliate to with best in terms of providing their feedback into this process. And with the Kaumatu Akahui Kaikeke, we've got a committee there that we need to institute something within the trustee to, to make sure their voice is heard as well. Yeah, Tika Piripi, um, at one stage there in uh, Mahia, there were quite a large number of um, youth suicide happening in Mahia but it's quite prevalent throughout the district now. So oh. whakamomori, suicide, yeah, very important. At the same time, we've got to realise that we're not going to spend our treaty settlement money on doing these social issues. We need to tell the Crown, you know, what are you doing about this? What can you help? Where are you putting your resources? That's, that's to collect the strength of Tata Tata, is to direct the government funding into these areas that need to go to address these sort of issues and other issues as well, housing, you know, the likes of that, to make, keep, make them accountable. Because at the moment there's no one making them accountable back at home to make sure they're doing what, they're, what our rights are as citizens of New Zealand. Cool. Okay, I think there's nothing more than values and principles. There's nothing more, we'll move into the next stage of um, representation. Uh, representation, um, like I said, is, is under review. We're looking at changing a little bit structure to Rohe Tupuna base, um, but wanting that discussion to have happen at that local level, um, not for ta to, ta to tell everyone this is you're going to do it this way. Because we did that through the Tita, and that kind of created a bit of friction between the two. 
we've got to be mindful of that all Putin ta -ta -ta -ta, not locking hands and creating friction with each other, create a structure in which it's ground driven up from those groups um, that we can work together. Numbers wise, you know, there's still under discussion, is it seven, is it six, is it four, three, two, one, you know, in terms of the, the numbers. But there's some discussions that at home they need to have with the existing kahui about how they see themselves um, in relation to neighbours. Yeah. Cool. Everyone's familiar with the kahui structure, they're happy with that kahui structure, eh? Yeah. This needs a bit of refinement in terms of making it a bit more clearer. My curry, curry, I hate Tangata too, Kite, Koriro, Koriro, Riro, Mote, Koriro, Noho, Inarikia, Kaka, Tata, Kite, Fakaputaina, Yinga, Fakaro, so um, the, current, the, the current structure we got in place, um, I do Kiona, uh, Yinga, Namia, Piki, so some of the benefits of it is uh, those representatives know what is going on in, in that particular mm. environment mm. Mm. Uh, within the Hapu and the Iwi, they understand because mm. they. They live on that whenua, they understand that whenua, and um, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to see that coming through mm -hmm. into the mm -hmm. next model. Mm -hmm. There's got to, um, there's, um, like I said, there's got to be that representative because they, they truly know uh, what their rohe, mm -hmm. their takiwa is mm -hmm. all about in regards to um, its potential, I guess, mm -hmm. in regards to its assets and, and what it can offer. Mm -hmm and bring forward for not only its hapu, but also for um, the iwi of, mm. of te wairua. So uh, I think um, I'm liking the current structure because there are the voices, the voices mm. of those different mm. hapu can be heard through those mm. those representatives. Yeah, mm. kia ora. Yeah, the current structure helps us, um, I guess, um, at that ground level. They set the priorities, they set the where, the, where it's best needed, rather than having a centralised structure that tells everyone what it should look like. Um, there's a bit of confusion um, with the current structure about my voting entitlement uh, currently ag against my beneficial entitlement. Um, what the Tata Tatu and Fruita Tita did was you get one vote for the collective stru structure as, as such and you also only get to vote on one particular kahui. That just gives a bit of fairness and transparency which is sometimes it, it locks horns with my whakapapa entitlement. I fuck up up at the multiple kahi, multiple structure, why can't I vote in multiple structure, multiple game? Well then we'll get this scenario where a particular person has more influence over the settlement because of the, they've got a stronger fuck up up a connection. So to keep it simple and easy and, and fair, you would just have one vote for Tato Tato as well as one vote for electing a representative. But going through the, the Rōpū and the Rōpū processes and setting up, that, does, that means you can uh, participate in each of the individual Rōpū if you're fuck up up a goes that far to benefit and participate in those individual rōpū. So your benefits are separate to your voting entitlements. It's just a bit of a, it's a, bit of a hard issue to explain, but that's the reason why they kind of, you don't get to vote on all kahui, you don't get to vote on everything. Um, we'll create a bit of an imbalance uh, in the trust. So, but you, if a particular rōpū was offering uh, scholarships and you fuck up with that rōpū, you could benefit from that scholar scholarships or if another Rupu was doing something with housing at the local kind of level you could benefit from there so benefits are delivered through the well hopefully going to be delivered through the through the Rupu. Hmm. Cool. Understand the independence process. Is it a key thing to have this included in the in, in the recommendation? It's, it's it's come through quite strongly from one particular particular kahui, but others have also mentioned it, so for the trustees it's fair that this option be available to all rōpū, not just one, to make sure it's fair and transparent. Um, it is an option, they, they need to exercise an option through having a, a hui, um, triggering the clause, then a negotiation period, and there's a, a rōpū vote to whether they want to. And that rōpū vote um, will include those that all, all fuck up to that particular group, irrespective of if you're selected, that is your only voting group.
Lee Heidi is my maiden name. Um, I was just thinking, what would be the benefits if we had heaps of Fano in my family, and your Fano might only have one or two? My vote, plus all their votes against your vote, that doesn't seem even. So, do you think as a Fano, we have one vote per Fano, and then it becomes even? throughout, or else we're going to have this lopsidedness, like, I don't know, you might all have lots of people in your whānau that are registered, and we go to do the vote, how is that going to work? Hmm. Um, and my other question is, the leaving principle, yeah. to what would be the benefits of the rōpū leaving hmm. the, okay. the thing? I, I have yep. no idea, would hmm. they be set apart and, hmm. you know, just hmm. left there to their own devices while the hmm. rest of you they get on and, and do whatever hmm. needs to be done. You know, hmm. what, what do we do there? Yep. And as a rōpū, does everyone have to vote to go out? Hmm. Or everyone has to vote to stay in? Hmm. Is there, like I know my whānau, we're all, we'd be 50% here and 20% hmm. there. You know, they, we've hmm. all got independent views. Hmm of what we would want mm. to do. Mm. So how is that going to work mm. for our, our law pers to decide mm. um, where we vote mm. for anything? Mm. Kia ora. Kia. No, very good, interesting question there around, particularly around the whānau voting aspect. We never thought of you know one particular whānau only having one vote. Um, we've always set up the mindset of um, individuals making up their own minds and having that vote and exercising that right. Good. More aligned to that. Westminster European type style of, of uh, voting processes. Yeah, we understand, we're familiar with it, but Te Kanga Māori may say that yeah, it's, it's whānau. Yeah. Mm. Whānau, sorry. Mm. That was it. Um, I just needed to, I don't know, it was just another thought that mm. maybe we need to think about that process. To make it fair, mm. I'm all about being fair. Mm. Yeah, and keeping it fair too, because everyone um, has the right to to register and has the right then to exercise that right to, to vote. You know, no one says they have to vote and has to register. We're not forcing members to register. Only those that want to participate in the process can exercise that right. So, how do we then balance that up as well too? So. Only, we only hear from those that want to express that, whereas the, the, sometimes the silent majority, we call them, don't exercise their right at all. And, you know, we only can put up ideas, um, points, that hopefully will get our members to, to participate. But that's why, you see, we're trying to drive the registration. We're trying to get to that magic number of 34,000, get them all involved, because at the end of the day, we know they need to be part, part of this process as well to make sure that they're informed, they participate, and that they can set the direction. But no, definitely a good question about participating along whānau, whānau lines. And in terms of the independence process, um, it's quite, it's, it came quite clear to us through the, process, through the feedback that independence process and also with particular with, with the Model 2 one, the diversified ownership, there's this aspect of mana motahake that's not incorporated into the value of the settlement. If I had mana motahake, I have greater exercise role. If I'm independent, I have mana motahake over my particular area, my particular resources. I don't have to go to another entity to ask them to do anything or ask them for help. They're, the, they're at that ground, ground level are in control of their, their direction. So that's why that's come through quite clearly. Again. Kia ora, uh, ko Shannon Simes, Taku um, A couple of questions, or a couple of thoughts actually. Really, um, I agree we probably need to have that independent vote in there. Um, just from that sort of democratic perspective of we all whānau, we all have our own opinions and we all have our, give everyone the option for it. Mm. But I think you've made a couple of good points around why you want to be limiting that as well. Mm. So you made a point about um, we don't want people jumping in and out mm. when they want. Mm. And, and, and one of the things that a perspective I'll bring to it would be from my work as in the professional environment, the commercial aspect of that, mm. that you say you want to tie the Crown into some sort of partnerships or obligations and bringing them into it. If they can see, if they see a, a trust set up that's potentially a different trust the next week or the week after and things like that, the, the, the commercial operations of, of Tato Tato 
will be severely restricted around that. You know, oh. third parties won't want to come and join. And you look around now, the, the, the big iwi doing those, the private, private government slash joint ventures. Oh. You know, some some of those sort of tie-ups would be a lot harder to come by where oh. where we have an, uh, an independence type thing where oh. it can happen any day. So oh. uh, I believe it probably should be there, but oh. it's you know there's got to be some sort of restriction on oh. when it can be exercised or if it oh. has to be at the start. Oh. See, this is my thoughts on that, but oh. yeah, that's pretty much. Oh. Cool. And of course, we, we, we do, with the thicker models, we've, got, we've started to look at some financial analysis around uh, what would that settlement look, that look like in terms of value uh, 20, 30 years out in terms of the two aspects. And we're going through that process with some advisors to, to look at um, that financial aspect of it. Um, but at the same, day, same time, that just looks at the numbers. It doesn't look like that. Look, add in the mana motahaki aspect for the diversified approach and so when you add the two, those two aspects together then you get a true value of what that settlement looks like in 20, uh, 30 years time but your point taken that we need to make sure the independent process is, is rigid and it has a, a set time frame um, to give Tata Tata that assurances that it needs, guarantees for us uh, its hamstring from day one. I'm feeling the same about the independence process. They understand it. There should be an option. We should available. So then we know basically who's on the waka after this time. Period. Everyone's given the opportunity because you know, sometimes you don't have this process and you may have a fractious group within the collective. It's always taken a litigation. So now now's the time. Have it open. Have a process. Exercise that right if you want to. And then after that, the vote's taken. What is it is? Who's on going forward together? Some people even think, you know, we started this together, but that's the, that was the crown process we started together. Before that, we weren't like that. You know, we were in our little areas looking after our little areas. Crown told us to come together. We're just kind of having that answer that question to them again, and then asking ourselves, do we want to stay together to go forward together? Well, yeah, moving on to the models. Did we look at the two models? One. Um, Consolidated, um, assets are all kept together, it's managed by Tata Tata, it probably potentially through an asset holding company as well, um, that will manage all the, the, uh, the assets, so it'll be, we will need some, I uh, guess, some capa capa capacity and capability on those type of committees, we need to get the right people and skills, at the end of the day, um, we all can spend money, but there's only a small group that can use money to make money. A different, quite a different skill set. Uh, so we need some professionals, uh, whether they're our own or whether they're outsiders. We'll need to need to look for those skills. So um, because some Rōpū assets are going to be higher in demand than others' assets. Huh. So, so when, f economically speaking, so when all, that, when all the benefits are coming in from those assets, they get evenly distributed throughout all of those Rōpū? Is that... Is that what, is that kind of what that model is heading towards? Well, that, it's again reflective of having that discussion about um, a particular Rōpū's share of that distribution. Is it does it incorporate population, area of interest, treaty breaches into a kind of a distribution policy? So that Rōpū could benefit more from a particular asset because it has a stronger connection with it and it has a stronger overall um, say over the settlement. So. Or the other option is have an equal, because we can't determine those particular um, issues uh, regarding, particularly around treaty breaches. Remember, the Crown never um, valued individual treaty breaches. They one comprehensive settlement and came up with a one comprehensive formula. None of the individual who had their treaty breaches valued. So to go down that process potentially could be quite fructuous. Um, who, would, who are the experts in that area in terms of valuing what an individual Rōpū's treaty breaches were? Area of interest and population statistics are pretty easy. That's kind of data we can collate quite easily. Um, but whether we go down that process of uh, divvying up, you would say, the dist 
income distribution into into areas, or tagging certain income to certain rupee because they have a um, particular um, uh, affiliation to that particular asset. Um, but that's more focused on model two, where that kind of you're given assets, uh, given a cash asset, you would say, and then you would buy back what you thought was relevant to you, whether it's a forest, uh, deferred selection property. Yeah. You would, yeah. Uh, my question, uh, uh, Leon, is um, are uh, under module one, are all the Rōpū set up to receive um, the, the whatever? Oh, oh they are. No, the bo under both models, um, we, uh, we, with the representation arrangements, we um, take in everyone's feedback and see and and looked at it and says we're going to need some structure. They're going to need some kind of um, frameworks, um, entities built up in some of the inter other entities. These particular two two groupings that have existing structures in place. Uh, we need to make sure that those entities have got the right to governance. You know, have all the ticks and ticks and boxes. At the same time, we need to help other law who don't have that structure to set up set themselves up. So there's a time process to go through to to run and help them do that uh, before they potentially receive any um, assets. So do you um, envisage any hold-ups? That's what I'm getting asking to. Asking for that. <laughs> well, if, if you can the hold -ups, get what I mean. Yeah, the hold-ups will come from the rural themselves because they may not have greed on their area of interest or their neighbours and they could be in a, in a dispute or over those yeah, areas yeah. of their Europa areas, yeah. that would hold up the process. Yeah. Well, but for those particular Europa, but for other Europa who have got a clearly defined area of interest and clearly defined tea burner and clearly defined um, assets within the settlement, they could move a lot quicker than others. So whether we go this together, the slowest one slows everyone up, or we go through a process where we look at the individual Europa, give them the resources they need uh, to, to enable them to receive um, a distribution or one. So that would apply to both models? Well, both models, yeah, because on um, the model one you're receiving an income distribution, and model two you're receiving an income distribution and assets. Because the assets kept consolidated in model one, you're not receiving any capital asset, you're just going to receive a, an annual or quarterly or whatever distribution out of the centre. And also so some of that, that distribution policy, some of it will be reinvested back into um, Tato Tato to make sure it can fund itself to continue. Um, Particularly on Model 2, that one of the key points here is that it, Tata Tata had to exist. And when that, our concepts dev, um, devolution were not having a Tata Tata, it has to exist because the Crown rec only recognised Tata Tata. It doesn't recognise the seven entities or six entities that sit within the Rōpū because that's the way that the settlement was structured. So we need a Tata Tata for those particular cultural redress relationships, the, the properties, DF, DF, DFS and RFRs, It'll, Crown's looking for that entity. We need to make sure that Tata Tata entity is resourced to manage those processes and manage those relationships. If we take too much out of the middle and go to the individual Rōpū, then that Tata Tata is going to suffer because it needs to fund those processes themselves and look after those processes to make sure that the, it's um, abiding by its responsibilities. You know, whereas this one here, it's all in the middle. It can fund it itself. It has a set policy, set X amount of percentage is distributed to the individual Rōpū, X amount is reinvested back into itself to cover its costs as well as to grow the asset. Oh. No. So both models need a lot of capability and skills at, the lo at that local level. Yeah, so, so finally you know who got those skills who want to go back home and help back home to help set up those structures. That'll be good to help out. And remember model two here. It's a bit over here it's pretty easy, the asset stays in the middle. We just um, we're just talking about the income. And when you get over to model two with a distributed diversified approach where certain assets is kept in the middle and certain is distributed, it can get a bit tricky regarding 
if a potential rōpū wants to keep it all in the middle and keep it in with tato tato, whereas another rōpū might want to take X percentage of their share out. And that's why we have a, a kind of an asset holding company that will be reflective of individual rōpū's percentage they've left in into, that, into the centre. So you got, it's quite complicated of rōpū taking out a share over time, so you don't take all your money out, you may not take, get a, a, an income capital distribution up front, you may only want to accept part of that distribution. Whereas then you've kind of kept it all in the middle with all the collective of tato tato, and you earn your percentage will be relative of your interest. And over time you won't want to draw down on a capital. So like having the bank over here and you've got a lot of money in the bank and the bank keeps it and holds on to it and looks after it for you. And over time you want to take out money to do things, you can take out money to a certain percentage level though. You gotta make sure we need leave a certain percent in it's it's kind of a hedging it's trying to trying to hedge trying to get a benefit of, of both the consolidated asset, trying to earn a lot of income out of it, as well as having a lot, lot more mana motahaki compared to this one over here, model one. That's all. And over here, uh, mana motahaki is represent, represented by ownership, by owning the asset, whereas mana motahaki over here is represented by kaitiakitanga. Now, if you're the particular asset system in your area, then you could, you'd be the one that uh, appoints directors to that asset, has those relationships with crown entities. So rather than having ownership, you don't have ownership, you just have those principles. But over here, it's more, that's the ownership side. If, ownership, if mana motahaki equals ownership to you, then you'd prefer this. So that's one of the questions we've got in the booklet, you know. It's, this is a key for a particular rupee to own the assets. Okay. Clear as mud, Barney. It's a very kind of in-depth conversation to have about, you know, how, how you see the... I know we focus on ownership of assets, uh, that can, can be a word that people get at, uh, a bit, yeah, it's not about the, the asset, but we need to answer that question. Ownership, who owns it at the end of the day, who owns it has you know, a lot of say in it. Uh, that was my concern with module one is where do the iwi hokaina uh, stand in regards to having their ability to exercise kaitiakitanga upon within their taonga and their resources um, we, yeah, and to ensure that that's still maintained with, with, the, with the tahungaiti and the iwi hokaina is that they still have that, um, that set, uh, still a sense of authority um, over the distribution or um, yeah, the protection mm. and, and um, mm. preservation of the resources mm. if they were to come under <coughs> module one on the title. Mm. title. So, kill the mm. mm. As I like Shannon said, over time, you know, they could build up sufficient funds to buy that um, particular asset back out of Tato Tato. It's just uh, a longer period with model one because you're only getting a, a, that annual distribution, but you could do that from day one if you wanted to with model two, with the getting a a kind of a capital um, base to work from. So that particular group, we can buy that asset straight our way if they perceive that to be important um, from day one. So one's more longitudinal, one's more kind of now, we want to get things done now type approach. So in the, in the back of the booklet, you see the questions. I think I've kind of briefly ran through them with you today. Um, just fill out that form, go online, go to the Facebook, um, all those um, avenues for providing feedback. Um, those particular questions are crafted, so it helps the trustees know uh, which particular direction we need to take um, moving forward to, to hopefully early next year come back with uh, a detailed model and some detailed recommendations. 
but we'll come back again and, and explain that in our third and final round of a consultation um, of, of, of this process. We want it to be as fair and transparent as possible, but at the same time, our members need to make, um, provide us a direction and make the final decision. So, well, no further questions, everyone? Um, it's They haven't registered, get them registered too. Right. Mm. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but <laughs> well, right. at home um, Kia ora, so I'm just looking at model two. Yep. Um, and just in regards to the risks, um, if we decided, and I say we, which is, you know, all of the clusters decide to go down that road, yep. um, the risk if it doesn't work. Yep. So, yes. Tato Tato will be, say for instance, at all here, at all Poo gets, you know, some assets, they make a mess of it, that's when Tato Tato will step in and say, hey, no, you're not doing things right, it needs to come back. Is that, yeah, have you looked at that sort of factor in there? Not, not quite, not quite in terms of what level do we need to step in. If a particular group did receive an asset as such and they got themselves into trouble, I guess Tata Tata and its due diligence will need to have the ability to write off first refusal to buy that particular asset back. But in terms of receiving cash and then going out and doing some bad sort of investments with that, um, that's, you know, that's part of having mana motahake. You're not having mana motahake if someone else is sitting over you and saying, you need to come back and you can't do that so that is the risk of you know that's why we need um, these structures of these rope set up so they're quite fair transparent resilient they have the right people engaged to make sure uh, yeah cool there are risks involved with that, all models but yeah We did get some advice on the existing PSG structures, what out, what's out there. You know, some of the got highlighted, some of the bad cases. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a, everyone likes to make stories of the bad cases of PSGs that have gone wrong. But there's also we need to learn from the Parker world, and that their world, they got some lot of bad cases too. So we need to learn from both to make sure that uh, we get the right people involved in these um, investment decisions and running these entities. Um, and hopefully, they will be involved. And, to run them to make sure that um, you know, it's, the assets looked after. You only get this shot once in a lifetime. Uh, it'll be. F I mean, yep. <laughs> Depending on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you get one shot at it, yeah. Yeah. Depends, yeah, depends if you're risk adverse, whether you, you know, if you're risk adverse, you would keep look to more the Model 1 consolidated, you only have a small group of people, hopefully, whereas the Model 2 is a bit more riskier, a bit more diverse. You know, you, you're letting some of that control go out to some of the, the law to hopefully make the right decisions. But if we said... generations sorry this is about our generations to come mm. you know like um in 50 years time mm. we still want to make sure that our assets are still alive and well mm. and we haven't frittered them off mm. and done something wrong with mm. it mm. so yeah. 
I think that's what we need to think about. Yeah, and I don't think, um, you know, we're starting behind the eight ball here from the likes of Tai Nui and Aitahu, you know, 20, 30 years behind them. And we can't expect to be like them now, and they don't. It's going to take that time frame to build up to where they've got to currently. Uh, whether we, which, which option do we want to, in terms of the models, do that with is, is up to our members, in terms of their balancing the asset ownership with mana motahake. Uh, and a lot of those other PhDs are starting to move towards model two, you know, giving a bit more authority down at that, that kahu. Do we want to start where they are now? Um, but if we do, we're you know, potentially mindful that we might take us a little bit longer to get to where they have, where they're at, because that's starting from a smaller capital base. Kuinei Ke arohaina mai, ke amanaki hea mai, ke a tukuna iho ko te wairua tapu hai i whakatū whiratia mai ke mātau, ngā kū waho te tika, o te pono, o te māramatanga, o te oranga tonu tanga, a me te mātauranga. A ma mātau hoki e whakakurori a kitoa ingoa tapu, ke a tamu hewa i mātau ko koe a i hoa, kurori a kitoa ingoa tapu, amin. Amen. 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 Amen.